Hey guys, this is Marshall Kirby from Orchard Hill Farm Equipment. Today, behind me, we're gonna do a video on the RX Cab Series tractors by Coyote. They do a power shuttle and a mechanical shuttle transmission. The power shuttle is the most popular. That's usually what we have on the lot stocked here. It comes in a 12 by 12, or you can get a creeper gear, uh, which is splitting that gear, those gears into 24 uh, total gears forward and reverse. This is an RX 6620 power shuttle cab with R14 tires, which make this thing just look really awesome. Um, these R14s are only available currently on the 66, not the 73, um, but they just give it a mean look. And this, these tires are great for snow removal. So we're coming into winter here. It's fall time now. We're starting to stock up on stuff that guys are gonna be looking for for the winter to clean snow with. This is a great tractor for farm use, homesteading, large property owners, land clearing, and of course, snow removal, like we mentioned, field mowing, all that type of stuff. So it fits the needs to a lot of guys. Um, this is one of Coyote's bigger series tractors. These uh, go in a 66 horse and a 73. And then above that, the new series that just was released, um, which we'll be doing a video on, I'm sure, in the future, is the HX series, um, which is the next chassis above this. So uh, this series is super popular for us because it is the largest tractor that Coyote produces that does not have a DEF system. So no diesel exhaust fluid. That just means this machine runs a basic regen. It goes into an auto regen every 30 to 60 hours when you're using it, and there's no real crazy downtime. Um, and you're just putting diesel fuel in it. You don't have to worry about that DEF tank. Um, so a lot of guys love this size. It's the biggest size you can get without any of that stuff in it, which is great. As you can see on the rims here, both are, uh, invertible you can make this stance on this tractor wider or narrower you'll see the bolt patterns on the rims on the front and the rear not just the rear which is a great feature on the 66 you're gonna have a single step to get inside the cab if i'm not mistaken on the 73 it's a double step to get inside the cab um, the uh, the other tire choices on this tractor are going to be an agricultural tire an r4 uh, industrial tire which is also very popular and then a turf tire um, those are the other couple tire choices. Um, the loader is a KL7320 loader. This loader lifts up extremely high, um, has a great lift capacity, well, well above 3,000 pounds to full height. So this is a tractor that you could unload pallets of pellets with and not be budging it too much at all. Very safe and efficient for that. The breakout force is a couple thousand above that as well. All the grease circs are inner tube grease fittings. The loader does come off quick release. So for you farmers out there, these are gonna pop off like this, lock down um, and be kickstands. So you can remove this loader in a matter of minutes. Um, there's a pull handle right here, one on each side. And then there's four color coded quick disconnect hydraulic lines and you back away and your loader's off. So if you need to go in the, you know, in the field running a hay baler and you don't want the loader on the front, it takes only five, 10 minutes to take this thing off. And there's no muscle in when you put it back on, you drive in and you know, hook up your hydraulics and get it to sit back in its cradle and put your pin in, ready to rock and roll. So pretty easy to take on and off. Um, on top of that, the loader comes standard with a Bobcat or skid steer quick attach um, system. Two levers, you pull out on those two levers and your bucket's released. 82 inch quick attach bucket standard. Obviously with the skid steer quick attach, you're able to hook up pallet forks, snow plow, snow pusher, all that stuff to the front. Um, so bucket can come off really easily. This loader comes standard with a self-leveling feature. That is something that some people really do desire, um, meaning that if you just pull back on the loader joystick, the loader will go up and the bucket or the pallet forks will stay level, which is great for guys buying a tractor that they're gonna have people unloading equipment with, unloading pallets and stuff. It's gonna be really hard to dump you know, the load back onto the tractor by accident. So it's a great safety feature and just a good feature overall. This. Uh, Machine runs a four cylinder turbocharged Daydong diesel engine. So it is an engine that is produced by Coyote. Um, this engine is a phenomenally well-built engine. It's been out for a long time. We are seeing thousands and thousands of hours out of these engines before needing any major overhaul or maintenance. Um, and this engine has been so proven that the newly released Coyote skid steers and track loaders that you're gonna start seeing coming up to dealers lots actually are running the RX series engine that's under the hood of this because again, it's been proven, it's been out a long time, very good reliability and good power output out of that engine. There's a nice grab hook here for tying down the machine when you're loading it on a, on a trailer and whatnot, which is awesome. Your muffler is coming out down low here, so you're, you know, don't have a stack uh, 
impairing your visibility out the cab glass. Um, your loader connects in right here and goes down and you'll see this yellow frame that connects to the back axle, which is a great feature. Standard on that machine, you get that. And fuel tank right here, easy to fill right by waist height. Uh, I want to say this fuel tank, oh boy, here I'm shooting in the dark. I want to say the fuel tank capacity is right around 19, 20 gallons. I could be off a little bit, but it's definitely somewhere in that neighborhood. So plenty of fuel lasts you all day in the field. Cab comes standard up top here with two side view mirrors that are adjustable, two top cab lights, two rear cab lights. Both doors open and are lockable with the key. Side uh, marker lights for blinkers. And these side windows also pop open to give you fresh air inside that cab. All right, so now we're gonna open up the hood, show you a little bit about what's underneath this, uh, this machine and what type of powerhouse we got going on. So a hood opens like that, grill guard opens like that. Got some gas struts that hold this hood open like that. In the front, we have an interstate battery. They run an MTP24. Nice big Donaldson air filter. You got a couple, uh, you know, big 100 amp fuses, 60 amp fuses up front there, your horn. You got some different coolers and stuff. Little fuse box right down there. Uh, your radiator, which is screened in. You can undo that screen, pull it out, clean it out, blow it out with an air gun or whatnot. And uh, that's what we're looking at up front. Um, in back, which we can't quite see and we won't be able to see, is gonna be your AC unit and your regen filter, your DPF filter. Over on this side is really the stuff that you're gonna be touching as a customer if you are doing your own normal maintenance right here. So antifreeze overflow is right here. And this canister just fills and lowers as the, as the fluid do, does need to go up and down occasionally. And uh, engine oil filter right here. We have a dipstick for your front axle fill right there and a grease circ on both ends of the hub over there and over here right there. Engine oil fill uh, tucked up out of the way, but really easy access and you just get a nice skinny funnel right there. Fuel filter, which has a fuel heater in it, which helps to not allow the tractor to gel up in the cold weather. A sight glass in it and a water separator drain plug at the bottom here, which is great and a primer. So this is a top of the line fuel filter. It is, you know, one of a uh, more expensive fuel filter on the market, but they last longer and there's a lot of benefits from this. Uh, any person that's ever run diesel and ran a diesel in New England or in the cold climates will tell you how much of a pain in the butt gelling up is. So this is gonna prevent that a, an immense amount. Um, dipstick back here, your main hydraulic pump. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the normal stuff you're gonna be touching back here normal service stuff here. Obviously got drain plugs on your oil pan down there, um, that type of thing. Quick disconnects that we're talking about, your loader right here. Um, really good turning radius, which we'll start up after and show you. Again, step on this side, so not just a step on one side, step on both sides, which is a little feature that a lot of brands skip out on. And, uh, and again, you can get in and out on both sides of the tractor. I'm gonna close back up the hood now, just shut that so we can We'll move our way to uh, probably the cab next in a minute here. Show you what's there for standard features inside the cab. All right, so that locks up like that. We'll hop in the cab over here. So coming up in here, there is, uh, there's quite a few different features in this. So this is a 12 by 12 transmission. You have a four speed stick shift right here, a low, medium and high shift right here, and a forward and reverse right here, All right? Starting this tractor up is very, very simple. You're gonna push your clutch in, which you do still have that normal safety clutch right there to start up the tractor. So you'd push that in, have everything in neutral, turn over your key, fire up. From there, you're gonna pick low, medium or high range. From there, you're gonna pick one, two, three or four. And it's not like a standard car, so you can start this in third or fourth gear if you you know, so choose. And then from there, you can let off the clutch actually technically at that point, still not gonna move. And you just press forward and it's gonna take off driving forward. You wanna go reverse so you don't have to clutch. Go back, go to reverse. Very, very gentle and simple. No crazy force needed. Forward, reverse, forward, reverse. And if you do want to shift, you can shift like a standard car. Um, you're gonna clutch or you can't see it from your view right there, but there's a button right here. That will act as a clutch. So instead of pushing your clutch in, you can push in on that and shift to the next gear, let out, and now you're you know, engaging in that higher gear or lower gear. Um, so you can one, not clutch to go forward and reverse, and two, not clutch to shift through gears. The low, medium, and high, you do have to be stopped. Um, 
to change that range of gears and have everything else out of gear, but that's pretty standard protocol. 12 volt outlet, cup holder, fuse box inside the cab underneath this little you know area here, but you can throw your phone or something in there. The rear window opens, which is great. Opens really far, I'm not gonna let it go all the way because it's a hard reach. Uh, defrosted window. There's a circulation for the vent for outside air. So you can close off the air from outside or open it up. Um, helps you know defog the cab in the winter or summer months. You can also add a rear wiper. If you're doing a lot of snow removal back there, it's not a bad idea. The seat, there's a lot of adjustments on the seat. So the seat will, yeah, if I know where they are here. So you pull up on that, seat will go forward and reverse. A lot of adjustments there. Right here, you pull on that, you can tilt back your back. You can really get comfortable there. And you got an armrest right here. The armrest, as you'll see, has a height adjuster. You spin this a bunch of different times and it's gonna make it at a different height. So pretty cool, that's nice. And last but not least, really to make it comfortable in here, you got a turn knob right here. This is gonna change the compression in this seat up and down, bouncing around. As you see, I'm bouncing right now, it's taking the compression. That's a great design and makes for a really comfortable ride inside the tractor. So you'll set that for your weight, everybody's different, um, and height as well, that adjusts the height. Down here, you have a parking brake and your actual brakes, they do split. You can split them and brake on one side or the other. And also hidden right here where my foot is touching right now, this is a tilt steering wheel. So you push down on that, you can adjust that tilt steering wheel. You want it there, perfect, lock it. She's locked, good to go. All right, so this is gonna be your blinker setup right here. So you got you know left and right turn signals, uh, headlights, uh, dash lights, horn. You also have a horn on the, on the steering wheel right here as well in you know, the traditional location like a car would have. Over here, we have our throttle right here. This is gonna be your set throttle. If you wanna set your 540 RPMs to a certain you know, speed or whatnot for brush hogging and whatnot. Over here, push button four wheel drive on and off and two wheel drive. Four way flashers, directionals, and then an open outlet to put in like, again, you know, uh, let's say you mount an LED light bar and you need to throw a switch in there that can get mounted right there. So that's what that is. Um, over here, we're gonna have our loader joystick. This loader joystick has, you know, four-way controls, but also in the corner functions, it's gonna also have corner functions. So you can do, you know, a dump and curl at the same time, that type of thing. Very smooth operating loader. This loader also has this little guy right here, which you can push in and that locks out the loader. So if you're like hoisting something in the air, you don't want somebody to by accidentally hit this, drop whatever is hoisted in the air to the ground. You lock this in and you're mint, you know, nobody can mess with it. And then unlock it and now you're back to normal. The loader also will have float. Um, that's great for, again, the guys that are using the tractor for snow clearing, like snow plowing and stuff, float is key or leveling out land and dirt, definitely a key thing you need. Over here, we've got a couple different things going on. So uh, number one, these two yellow guys go hand in hand together. So this is to turn on and off your PTO, which would be your power takeoff on the back. So brush cutter, different types of mowers, rototillers, post hole augers, snow blower, all that stuff is turning on and off with this. Over here is your physical, you know, 540 and 540E and neutral. Neutral means that no PTO is gonna engage if you turn this on. 540 means that your traditional 540 RPMs for most attachments, you push this all the way forward, you turn this on, 540 is engaged. 540E is a different setting back here. That is, again, going to run at a lower RPM. So that's going to save fuel, save you know money in, in a sense, if you have the correct implement. So a good example of a 540E uh, implement would be something like maybe a you know very light duty hay tether that doesn't take a lot of horsepower to run or a generator that doesn't take a lot of horsepower to run can save fuel, drop it into 540E, turn this on, and you're good to go. It saves you, saves you some fuel for sure. Um, and you're running your RPMs at a much lower RPM on the engine, which is nice. You have two more extra cutouts here and one cutout here. Come standard with one set of remotes standard. On the cab, you're gonna get a spring-loaded remote, you know, standard. You can add a second remote, either spring or detent, and a third remote, spring or detent as well. Um, one thing I didn't mention, this armrest comes out right to the loader joystick, very comfortable, you know, in a perfect position. Um, back here, we have a couple different things. This is your draft control and three-point hitch control. So in a bigger ag tractor like this, you'll usually get draft control on the three-point hitch. 
which is really only going to be used to kind of not allow an implement to hop out of the dirt. Um, so let's say a disc harrow or a two bottom plow, you drop it in the dirt, it starts digging in, starts hitting some harder soil, it's going to want to hop itself out. So that draft control is going to allow it to only fluctuate in a certain area. Um, so that's a nice feature. It's also got these lockers on it, so you can lock it so your implement, you know, doesn't sag over time. Um, and you always lift and lower your implement to the same exact height setting, which is cool. Over here, we got a bunch of different buttons and some open slots for different options. These are all cab lights, front and back cab lights, white window wiper, um, rear defrosted window. Right here, we have cruise PTO with a you know incline and decline on the RPMs. Uh, this right here, incline and decline right here, is for the physical engagement of that hydraulic clutch system. So, uh, you know, you you press this a bunch of times, it up, it's going to probably speed it up and, and your engagement when you go forward to reverse on the shifter is going to be way faster than if you turn it down. Um, so pretty simple, that's what that is. Bunch of cutouts, again, for other buttons if you need to add some. Um, and then coming over here, another cutout right here, a cup holder. Um, you have turn assist control that would basically drop your RPMs if you turn the tractor at too fast of a speed. Uh, this is your regen system button, um, so that's what that is right there. And then over here, auto and manual PTO. Auto and manual PTO goes with these yellow knobs right here. Uh, manual means that you and are in charge. Every time you want to turn on your implement, you turn it on. Every time you want to turn it off, you press it and turn it off. Um, auto is physically going to mean that you turn on your mower, you drop your mower to the ground. Every time you lift that mower back up, okay, I'm done mowing, or you know, need to lift it up because I got to drive over, I don't know, uh, a driveway, and then drop it back. As soon as you drop it back in the field, it's going to turn the mower back on. So lifting up would engage, disengage your mower per se, and then you drop it to the ground, it's going to re-engage that mower for you. Um, so a really nice feature for mowing, snow blowing, rototilling, stuff like that. Because again, then you don't have to physically touch this. You leave it in auto, you turn it on, it literally turns on and off every time you lift and lower it. So really nice feature. Um, that's about it for inside the cab. Next, we're going to take a, a little peek at the rear end of the tractor, what they are having standard for features back there, um, and, and go over that. So, all right. So back here, it's going to be a category two three-point hitch. Uh, the three-point hitch is a telescopic three-point hitch system. So these extend out about four to five inches, which is great. And when they're out, there's also a couple inches of play, which is nice. When you, you know, want to lock them back in, you back into that implement and it will lock in like that and you're good to go. Um, adjusting the width on these is a pull pin. You pull that pin and uh, you set it back in the hole you want it in. A lot of paint on these when they're brand new. Um, and it's locked in and now good to go. It's stuck in position. Um, one of these is adjustable with a turn handle right here, which is cool. Um, this side is adjustable, but you do have to pop this pin out and turn it by hand. You'll see that there's external pistons for the three-point hitch, which is very heavy duty. And it's nice that they're external in case we have an issue with lifting three-point hitch. The pistons are outside the, uh, you know, outside to be serviced, which is nice. Uh, grease cirques on, on the top and bottom of those. Single rear remote, if you add a second or a third, they get, you know, you pop these bolts, undo this, stack them on top and put the new bolts in. So pretty easy install. Rear window that you can kind of see what's going on down here from inside the cab, which is great. Category two top link, uh, which has three different hole adjustments, which is nice. The PTO, which has a covering shield that can be lifted out of the way so you don't mash your fingers on the PTO shield when you're trying to hook up a mower. Full, you know, size drawbar, farming style drawbar, which can be removed. Checking your hydraulic fluid and filling your hydraulic fluid is done right here. And, uh, oh, uh, three-point hitch lift lever. Can never forget that. That's a really nice feature. So coyotes, when they're on and, you know, physically running, you can hop off the tractor, hook up your implement. If you don't quite have these at the right height, when the tractor is on hydraulically, these will take over the three-point hitch arm controls in the cab up and down, we'll lift these arms up and down and you can lock them and set them in the position and get right into that implement. So really heavy duty rear end. This tractor does weigh in um, at, a, at a pretty hefty weight. A uh, unit right is, I wanna say right around 9,000 pounds, give or take. You add tire ballast, you're gonna be hitting close to that 10,000 pound number. Uh, and that's the 6620. So 
She is a heavy girl. Definitely a good unit for running in the hay field, uh, running on a you know large farm. Um, snow removal guys tend to you know gravitate towards this unit. It's a great machine to put a snow pusher on. Um, firewood processing, land clearing, and uh, yeah, overall it's just a really good tractor. It fits a lot of different categories for customers, and it's uh, it's a lot of tractor for the price point. The um, I can't say enough good things about this RX series. Um, it just seems like every year they get more and more popular. So this is, uh, again, Marshall Kirby from Orchard Hill Farm Equipment showing you guys the RX 6620 power shuttle cab with a loader and R14 tires. We hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you got any questions on this series, uh, shoot us an email or uh, give us a call, 413-253-5456. And we hope you guys enjoyed the video, thanks. See it through